What is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again for the fourth straight week. We have NFL predictions because this is the fourth straight week of the NFL. Who would have figured? Last week, for me as a Giants fan, was absolutely amazing. And I'm sure most of you can guess why. Don't really need to elaborate any further on that until I do later on in these predictions. However, we're going to kick the entire week off with Thursday, September 26th. That would be tomorrow on Fox, NFL Network, Amazon Prime Video. It is the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the Green Bay Packers. So, Eagles come into this game at 1-2. and two. Green Bay comes in at 3-0. and oh. So, you look at Green Bay, they're 3-0. Oh. That looks great on paper. But their defense has played spectacular football. I, I, you know, I, all right. I won't say spectacular football, but they've been playing really, really, really good defensive football. And their offense, you know, I mean, I'd like to see a little more out of, out of Aaron Rodgers and his guys, but, I mean, this offense, I think, is just a time, you know, a, a time will tell sort of situation. I think it's going to come alive sooner rather than later. But the Eagles, on the other hand, Man, they had all those injuries to the wide receivers. They can't catch a break. That freaking that guy roasting the Nelson Aguilar about not being able to catch anything. Talking about those babies getting thrown out the window. If you haven't seen that video, just just look it up. It's insane. This guy is talking about there was like I, I guess it was a building fire, like an apartment building fire or something, and he he had to stand out there and catch babies. They were being thrown out the window. He was like, yeah, these people started throwing babies and we were catching them, unlike Aguilar. Poor, Nel poor Nelson Aguilar. The dude contacted... Aguilar contacted the guy that roasted him in this video and offered him and his family free game, free tickets to the next home game. <laughs> like, I mean, weird flex, Nelson, but okay. I mean, I, I get it. I understand... You're playing like garbage. Your team's playing like garbage. But still, that's a lot of money to be giving away. Whatever. So the Eagles have been playing bad football. Defense, everybody was like, yeah, this defense is going to be great. They haven't really lived up to all that hype. And the offense hasn't held their end of the bargain either. Uh, I mean, with Carson Wentz, you think you should be able to put some points on the board. But, you know, I mean, Jeffrey's out. Jackson's out. And Aguilar can't drop anything or can't catch anything. So, I mean, they're in a tough spot. But they've still got, you know, Jordan Howard running the football. I don't know who else is who's backing him up. But that's not a bad, you know, running back to have on your team, Jordan Howard. So I really couldn't put my finger on what exactly, you know, their main issue is. And I, I just I can't see them getting out of this funk that they're in against Green Bay. The Packers are just... They're a team right now at 3-0 that they're 3-0 without even playing great. You know what I mean? Like, that's just going to... They're, they're, they're a team that's going to be really, really good. So, I, you know, I'm going to pick the Packers. I'm going to be wearing my Aaron Rodgers jersey on Thursday night because I love him. He's the greatest man to ever walk the face of the earth. Don't at me because it's it's the truth. There's ex-New York Giant Prince of Mukamara. I want to return this thing to the house really quick. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Holy shit. Okay, Sunday, September 29th. Let's kick things off at 1 p.m. on CBS with the 1-2 Tennessee Titans visiting the 1-2 Atlanta Falcons. So, obviously, as many of us football fans know, the Falcons have not played good football. Offensively, they look like garbage. Defensively, they look like garbage. And special teams, I'm sure they look like garbage. But the Titans, on the other hand, they are such a weird-ass team. And I know I said this a lot last week, but it, the teams in the league right now through through three weeks look very, very weird, and the Titans are no exception. They're kind of middle of the pack in everything that they do. Mariota is good enough to be a starter, but not good enough to win anything. And, I, I mean, I guess that's where Matt Ryan is at this point in his career, too. So this matchup's really close in my estimation. It's going to be a close game. I'm, you know, I'm going to give the edge to the Falcons, though. I, even though Matt Ryan's throwing a bazillion interceptions, I think he'll kind of right the ship. I just don't, you I know, mean, just going off the quarterback comparison alone, I can't pick uh, the Titans over the Falcons. So I'm going to go with the Falcons in this game. 
Next up, 1 p.m. on Fox. Game I have very, 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 very vested interest in. The 0-3 Washington Redskins visiting the 1-2 New York Giants. So, I know you guys are waiting for this one. Daniel Jones came in last week in his first NFL start and had four touchdowns and the Giants ultimately won the game. <laughs> Absolutely incredible performance from Daniel Jones. I honestly, you know, I am the most optimistic Giants fan there is. I want the team to do well. I constantly overblow expectations for them. But good lord, did Daniel Jones blow me away on on Sunday afternoon. Absolutely freaking blew me away. And sure, it was one game, but they played a, a pretty decent Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. And I, I've been hearing it all week, you know, they didn't play anybody special. It's just one game, yada, yada, yada. But I'm, I'm, even though it's only one game, I'm, I'm, I'm buying in. I'm buying in to Daniel Jones. The Jones era, Danny Dimes, DJ, whatever you want to call him. The freaking savior of New York. The Duke of New York, I saw. That's clever. I, I like that one. The Duke of New York. But, whatever, I mean, whatever you want to call the kid. Daniel Jones looked outstanding in that game on Sunday afternoon. There's not really much he could have done better other than eliminating the two turnovers. But other than that, you you just hold on to the football a little, little more when you're getting hit. And boom, you're golden. But that freaking that front four there for, for Tampa Bay is a big, stout, hard-hitting group. You know, they stifled Saquon Barkley for large portions of that game until he got hurt. So... It's not a bad defense that they went up against. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you know we should put an asterisk next to Daniel Jones's first career win because it was against Buccaneers because the Buccaneers are not a bad team. Clearly, you saw. I don't know if it's more a product of how bad the Giants' defense is or how good the Bucks are, but Michael freaking Evans, Mike Evans, had three touchdown catches in the first half and finished with almost 200 yards. Are you? kidding me like it was an incredible offensive performance from them obviously the Giants defense is like a bucket with holes or like a bucket with just a the piece of the rim and the the handle on it There's nothing else below it just imagine that sight whatever the Giants defense is they played well they had their first turnover of the year and I mean I, I, I don't, I don't want to say they played well throughout the whole game because that would be a lie they played well through the second half but uh, you know until Tampa Bay started to throw the ball again and then Mike Evans happened on that last drive which led to the Matt Gay field goal miss whatever okay so like I mentioned earlier Saquon Barkley will not be in this game he is out for about a month maybe a month and a half with a high ankle sprain and if any of you know ankle sprains the way I do there are two types there is a low ankle sprain and a high ankle sprain one of those you want to get, preferably over the other. The other one you do not want to get, preferably over the other. The one you do not want to get is the high ankle sprain. Saquon Barkley has a high ankle sprain, because God damn it, of course he does. But in all honesty, after he went into the locker room on Sunday, the offense started playing really good football. The first play out of the half... You know, it was a 75-yarder to Evan Ingram for a touchdown, which is the longest reception by a Giants tight end ever. <laughs> like, the, these numbers just shouldn't be, you know, thrown around and just forgotten about. These are important, important numbers. But Barkley, you know, obviously he's a huge part of the team. He's a mammoth part of the New York Giants organization from a player perspective and he's gone we're going to be missing him for a month and a half we probably won't even see him on the field again until week 11 after the Giants buy and that's going to be tough and it's going to be really tough for Daniel Jones to to live in a world you know without Saquon Barkley but it, 
on the other hand, it's going to teach him to be a better quarterback, not having to rely on the best running back in football every play like Eli Manning did and just check it down and check it down and check it down. So this could be a blessing in disguise for the development of Daniel Jones. And it's going to be a lot easier in the next coming weeks because you've got uh, Sterling Shepard back healthy, Evan Ingram, you know, he's going at a high, 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 whatever I'm going to say, high, high, you know, he's going at a high level. Uh, Golden Tate comes back next week, not next week, the following week, I'm sorry. Whatever, they shouldn't have suspended him in the first place. But he's getting weapons back. Sure, he's minus Saquon Barkley, but he's going to be able to have some weapons to throw to. And obviously, we saw last week, he has a unique ability to run, to run the football, which I am very, very pleased with. First Giants quarterback since 19, what was it, 1991 with two rushing touchdowns? And like the first since like ever with two rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns? Get, get, get out of here. It's, it's, it's incredible. Obviously, you guys know I'm going to pick the Giants in this game. After what we saw from the Redskins on Monday night against Chicago, oh my God. That was one of the most pathetic halves of football I've ever seen without watching the Miami Dolphins. Like, that was just straight up pathetic. No fight, nothing. They got absolutely, absolutely hammered by friggin' Mitch Trubisky throwing three touchdown passes to the same kid. It's, it's ridiculous. And the, I mean, the Redskins, they're gonna have to switch to Dwayne Haskins sooner or later or else this their whole thing is just going to be a mess. And, I mean, it's a mess right now, but they need to get Haskins on the field. They need to pull the trigger, and I know they're trying to steer away from the comparisons with Haskins and Jones, but you just you got to do it. you got to bite the bullet and put your freaking rookie in there and try to spark your team. Because the Washington Redskins, let's face it, are not a bad unit. They're not. But they've been playing like absolute dog, you know, dog poop. So they need to get a spark. Put Haskins in there. I know Haskins looked terrible in the preseason, but maybe he doesn't look terrible in the regular season. He comes out, throws a couple touchdown passes against the Giants. Everyone's happy. They get out of there. You know what I mean? Just anything you can do to help the offense look better. But I don't think it's going to be enough. I think the Giants' defense steps up this week. Obviously, I think Daniel Jones will continue his hot streak from last week. And the Giants will get a big win on Sunday afternoon and break even through four weeks, which is huge for them. So I'm going to pick the Giants in this game. Next up, we have the uh, LA Chargers and the Miami Dolphins. So the Chargers are 1-2, and two, surprisingly, and the Dolphins are 0-3. You know, it's funky to me, because the Chargers coming into this year, I'm sure a lot of people had pegged as AFC Championship caliber team to get there yes to win it depends on who they play but one and two through three weeks yeesh it's a it's a tough hill to climb for a perennial playoff team that you think is going to get there you know it's a tough hill to climb and i know it's only week four and they can break even with a win this week but still, I mean, psychologically, you got to look at it. Through four weeks, you're a team that was supposed to be this great team. You're only down, really, Melvin Gordon, and you're one and two. It's, it's got to be a tough pill to swallow for those guys. But, you know, conversely, with the uh, Miami Dolphins, they switched to Josh Rosen last week against Dallas. Rosen didn't look terrible. Okay, let's just be frank. He didn't look terrible. His team around him didn't give him much of anything. I mean, the defense, they did their part. I mean, what do, what do you want more from, from the defense in Miami last week through the first, you know, quarter of that game? But the drops, you know, and the missed opportunities, can't blame that all on Josh Rosen. And then when he got hurt and he came back, he didn't look right. I don't think he should have been back in that game. But, I mean, they had a shot. Whether it was realistic or not, at, at a point in that game last week, the Miami Dolphins had a shot against the Dallas Cowboys, whether it was realistic or not. 
but uh, they will continue their losing ways, drop to 0-4. Chargers are going to get back to 500. If they don't, and the Dolphins sneak out of here with a win, color me a little, you know, color me a little jump, jump the gun-ish. I don't even know the term for it, but I'm going to jump the gun if the Chargers lose this game, and I'm going to write them out of the playoffs because this is a steep hill to climb back from if you go to one and three losing to the Dolphins so I've got the Chargers in this game bolt up come on let's do it get your head in the game next up Las Vegas Raiders oh sorry um, that was an honest mistake honestly the Oakland Raiders at the Indianapolis Colts so the Raiders are one and two Indies two and one Colts look really good last week I think they're gonna continue their winning ways you know uh, the the Raiders they got their big emotional win uh, to start the year on Monday Night Football, and that's all well and good, but... Oh, I apologize for sniffling right into the mic. I didn't mean to do that. But that's all well and good, but, you know, the feel-good story's over, and Raiders fans, John Gruden, and Mike Mayock have to come to this realization that I have come to. You need to move on from Derek Carr. Yep, I said it. Fight me. Derek Carr might not be the issue overall with the Oakland Raiders, but he needs to go. They need to pick a quarterback in the draft and move in a new direction. You cannot pay this man all this money to be mediocre. You cannot do it. He's making too much money to be that bad. And I know bad is a relative term, blah, blah, blah. He's playing bad. And they need a kick in the ass next season and it's got to come in the at the quarterback spot quarterback starts it all for your entire team and they need a new one but i'm going to pick the uh, indianapolis colts to continue rolling adam venetary you know getting back into form which i like to see I like to see goats doing goat things so i'm going to pick the colts right after I watch adam Thielen do what he does whatever all righty <laughs> the carolina panthers at the Houston Texans. Panthers. What are they coming into this game at? They are 1-2 and two against the 2-1 and one Houston Texans. Okay. So Carolina got a win on Sunday. How'd they do that with Kyle Allen? Their backup quarterback. He looked sharp. Against Arizona. Sure. It's Arizona. Blah, 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 blah. He's still the kid looks sharp. I mean... I don't really care that he played a bad team. I care that he looked good. Houston, on the other hand, against the Chargers, they looked good. Kymie Fairbairn missed a field goal at half that would have, you know, brought the game closer, but they came back and won. They could have played better football, but Deshaun Watson, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And you, that's irrefutable evidence that you played good football. If you were voted to be the AFC Offensive Player of the Week, you played good football. And guess what? They won. And now they're at 2-1, and, and they face a 1-2 and two Carolina Panthers team with a lot of questions and a rookie quarterback. I'm going to pick the uh, Houston Texans in this game. I'm probably, what time is this game, 1 o'clock? Oh, damn it. I was going to say I'll wear my uh, Deshaun Watson jersey, but the Giants will be playing, so I won't even be able to watch this game, really pay attention to it. Whatever, but I got the Texans in this game. I love, I love what they do. Ooh, Khalil Mack. That was just a cover. Thank you, Khalil, for covering for my yawn there. I didn't mean to do either of that, but uh, good job. Okie doke. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, the uh, the Texans, I love what they do. Uh, you know, they're a good, a fun football team to watch. I like the guys they have receiving the football. DeAndre Hopkins, obviously. I'm drawing a blank on the other guy that I really like. Whatever. Will Fuller. Love Will Fuller. I mean, it's they, they're a good team. They're a solid team, and they have legitimate playoff aspirations. A big win here against the Panthers propels them to 3-1, and one, and whoo boy! I believe their schedule gets a little bit easier from here if I'm not correcting, or if I'm not to be corrected. So if you get a big win, you jump out to 3-1. The only thing stopping you is yourself if you're the Houston Texans. So I've got them in a big win. Over the Panthers. Next up, the Chiefs and the Lions. Two undefeated teams, technically. 3-0 Chiefs versus 2-0-1 Detroit Lions. I'm going to hate saying that all year 
for them in Arizona. God damn it, ties in pro football are the worst. They suck. Go to the college freaking format or something. Jesus. All right, so Kansas City looks unstoppable. Unstoppable. They played the Ravens last week in a game that I, you know, gave the Ravens a legit shot to win. And Kansas City just put the foot on their throat and they never, ever let up. The score might not necessarily reflect what I just said, but it's true. If you watch the game, you'll know the Chiefs did not let up. They gave the, the Ravens everything they had. And the Ravens are a good team. And they just happen to be bested by a better team on this day. They'll probably meet again in the playoffs. And if they do, it's going to be awesome. Because that game, you know, it got a little bit close there. And I'm sure people were kind of thinking, can Lamar Jackson really do this? No, he can't. But on this day, the Detroit Lions, who are 2-0, and haven't really beaten anybody that makes me think they're going to be, you know, a legit, a legit team in the NFC. They're going to be beaten by Kansas City. Casey's going to jump out to 4-0. They're going to be one of a couple teams here getting out to 4-0 to start the season. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of these Kansas City Chiefs. I would love to see them roll right through the Lions. Or right through the Lions, as we say, when we're not yawning on a live commentary. Okey doke the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. So, Cleveland, you talked all that nonsense in the offseason. You said all this nonsense about you're a Super Bowl team. You've got Beckham and Landry and Baker and, and Kitchens. And the defense is going to be great because they're young and talented. And Miles Garrett and everybody else. And you look foolish. You look absolutely foolish sitting at 1-2. and two. You beat the New York Jets on Monday night. A game which I was there for, by the way. You beat the New York Jets. And you lost very winnable, a very winnable game to the <clears throat> LA Rams. And you were punked by the Tennessee Titans. I mean, I don't want... I want every team in the league to be successful. Let's just throw that out there. I want every team in the league to be successful. But when you go out and you have Baker Mayfield run his mouth for six months and talk about how great the Browns are going to be, and then you come out and you look the way Baker Mayfield has looked, shut up. Go play football. The time for talking is over. If there ever were one. You put pen to paper and you look good, that's one thing. Well, you put cleat to grass and you look bad, that's another. And it's very indicative of the Cleveland Browns. And they need a wake-up call. Freddie Kitchens is the worst offensive play caller in football. It was extremely indicative on, on uh, Sunday night that he cannot call plays to put his team in a position to win. Fourth and nine, you run a draw. A goal-to-go situation from the four-yard line, you run three straight passes and Baker get your head in the game on one of those runs or on one of those passes he had a wide open alley wide open up the middle now if he had just seen that and ran in boom ball game you tie it up you go to overtime who knows what happens but the lack of vision by Baker the ineptitude of the offensive play calling and an inability on defense even though they were injured to make the key stops and it all leads to what? One and two start? You could be two and one right now. Easily. And people would be saying a lot different things about the Cleveland Browns. Trust me. But on the other side of the football, a team that looks really good that I can't stop gushing over, the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I'm not a Ravens fan by any stretch of the imagination. I don't care for them particularly at all. But they're playing some good, fun football. I like watching them play because they're a good unit. I like watching Lamar Jackson play. He's a fun, exciting player. They're going to be a playoff team. Sitting at 2-1, and one, they lost to arguably the best team or top two team in the entire American football conference. It's extremely impressive. So I like Baltimore in this game. And I mean, Cleveland, for you, it only gets harder. 
It only gets harder from Baltimore, so you better get your shit into gear and be ready to play some real man football. Because if you decide to come out and lay eggs like you did for two of the three games to start the season, you are toast, my friends. Absolutely toast. Going with the Ravens big time. They're going to win big here on Sunday afternoon. Patriots Bills. This one. <laughs> Oh boy, when you looked at it at the beginning of the year, you're like, okay, Patriots are just going to steamroll these poor clowns. But guess what? They're both 3-0. and I mean, when you look at Buffalo's schedule, they beat the Bengals, the Giants, and the Jets. So naturally, their first real team they would play would be the New England Patriots. Oh, boy. But, I mean, the Patriots have held their opponents to, what, three offensive points in the entire first three weeks? Are you kidding me? Three points given up week one to Pittsburgh. Zero to Miami. Seven to New York. But that was a pick six off Jarrett Stidham. The New England Patriots are the best team in football. Change my mind. They are. And they will continue to roll. I think Buffalo is 3-0 because they've had three easy games. They're a talented team. I'm not going to take that away from them. And the fact they've got three wins this early in the season is critical to what they can do later on in the season. As long as they can continue to play good enough football to go 500 throughout the rest of the year, that's a playoff team. <laughs> it's a playoff team. But they're going to eat their first loss at the hands of the best team in football the New England Patriots. And honestly, I don't think it's going to be close. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked. Bill's Mafia is going to be crying after Sunday. I got the Patriots. 405, the Buccaneers will visit the Rams. So the Bucks obviously had an offensive explosion last week against my New York Giants. But that's because the Giants' defense sucks. And they stopped who? The Carolina Panthers with a banged up Cam Newton. The Rams are 3-0. They will continue to roll. Nothing I like more than watching the Los Angeles Rams play football. Honestly, they are fun to watch. And now Goss got cut back, and he's got Woods, and he's got Cooks, and he's got Higby. It's a fun team. And I'm excited to watch them steamroll the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Maybe not steamroll. I mean, the Bucks aren't a bad unit. But none of the running backs out there in L.A. are going to do jack nor shit. I mean, that defensive front for Tampa Bay is lethal. Still, I like the, the Rams in this game. They're going to advance to 4-0. So by the end of this, we're going to have, per my estimation, the Packers will remain 4-0, the Patriots will remain 4-0, and the Chiefs and the uh, Rams will all remain 4-0. Woo! The, the herd is getting thinned as they say. And now I'm running out of time, so i got to start belting through these predictions. We've only got one quarter left in this game. After I throw this nice pass that gets intercepted. Whatever. All right, the Seahawks at the Cardinals. So the Seahawks got beat. That's the first loss in September under Pete Carroll with Russell Wilson. Are you joking? That was insane. And who thought Teddy Bridgewater was going to do that? I certainly didn't. You guys watched the video. I had no faith in Teddy Bridgewater to be able to go out there and win that game. However, they did it. And now the Seahawks are 2-1. and one. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. I didn't want to talk on my ass. And the uh, the Cardinals are 0-2-1. They really, really could have been the next 0-16 team. I don't think they will be. I think that's Miami's honor. But, I mean, just Kyler Murray has been such a spark plug for that team. He has given them great opportunities to win football games through three weeks. They just haven't really fell their way. One of them will eventually, but it won't be here. I think uh, even though they're in Arizona, I'm going to like the matchups that I got. If I'm Seattle, I like Russell Wilson more than Kyler Murray. So I'm going to take the Seahawks. They're going to get out the 3-1. and one. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of teams getting some pretty decent win totals this early in the season, which is a good thing. But, uh, yeah, I got the Seahawks winning here against the Cardinals. So, next up we have the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears, the game you're watching. And the Bears are going to wear these hot 
throwback uniforms. These things are freaking sexy. I don't care what anybody says. People might not like the helmets or the, the socks, but they are freaking awesome. These might be my favorite throwback uniforms in football. Aside from like ones that aren't used anymore, like the, the Eagles old blue and yellows. Those things are epic, but these are great for modern, you know, actually being used. Holy Roquan Smith. You're going to get tackled by Kirk Cousins? Don't do it, buddy. As long as you don't do that in the game on Sunday, you'll be fine. Vikings. They are, what is their win total? I am sorry for this. 2-1, and one, and they will face 2-1 and one Chicago. All right. That's interesting. I like that. But I think um, Minnesota is one of those fraudulent teams that's, you know, trying to ask for your social security number on the telephone. Don't give it to them because they will eventually end up burning you big time. Chicago, on the other hand, offensively, they kind of kicked it into gear on Monday night. And, I mean, they were playing the Redskins, so what do you want? But defensively, obviously, they looked stout. They looked fantabulous. There's not much, if I'm a Bears fan, that I'm complaining about. Maybe I want Mitchell Trubisky to, you know, play a little better, but whatever. And he does have a tough challenge. He gets to play Minnesota, which is not a bad team. They're a pretty good defense. I'm just not a Vikings fan at all. I hate them. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm Chicago, I like what I got going on. I'm picking Chicago to win this game. Kirk Cousins is he's fraudulent too. I hate that guy, bastard. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, Chicago picking up a win here at home. Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Denver Broncos. So Gardner Minshew, my new favorite quarterback in the no, he's not. But, like, my new top five favorite quarterback in the entire NFL. I love this kid. Not only because his epic facial hair and his amazing personality. The dude is a straight baller. Like, he's playing good football through three weeks. He really is. Just look at it. I know they're 2-1. But go look at uh, go look at their, their first game there. Wait, are they 2-1? No, they're 1-2. I'm sorry. I, I knew I was speaking out of my ass on that one. But go look at that first loss of the season and tell me Gardner Minshew didn't play good against Kansas City. They they have they had a chance to be to, uh, two and one, you know, against uh, Houston, but that stupid call to to go for two was was a stupid call, and obviously that game might lead to Jalen Ramsey leaving the team all all together, which would not be good for them. But they're facing an 0-3 Denver Broncos team. That has no end to their suffering in sight. I mean, they haven't looked terrible, but, I mean, like I mentioned last week, Joe Flacco is just the most worthless quarterback on the planet. I like the, the Jags in this game, and I like them to win over the Denver Broncos in mile high. Let's go Wazoo Man. Wazoo Man Gardner Minshew. Okay, Sunday Night Football. Cowboys. Saints. So last week, we all thought, looking at this ahead of time, oh boy, this is going to be rough. No Drew Brees. The Cowboys are going to run away with this thing. But now it's like, oh, Teddy Bridgewater likes to play football. Who knew? And the Cowboys are 3-0, the Saints are 2-1. Controversial opinion. The Cowboys are the worst undefeated team remaining in football. Mm-hmm. I said it. Who have they beaten that screams, oh my God, they're great? They've beaten the New York Giants. Oh, they've beaten the Washington Redskins. Oh, God. And they've beaten the Miami Dolphins. Oh, no. F you. Cowboys fans need to get their freaking heads checked because they're the worst. They're 3-0, and they've beaten not a single person that is going to the playoffs. F yourself. You're going to be beaten by Teddy Bridgewater and the New Orleans Saints. And that's just about all I have to say about that. Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, let's kick it into gear. Show them boys who the best are in the NFC. Even though it's not even you. But you know what I mean. It's not the Cowboys. It's a show match. And that does it for Sunday. But let's get to Monday. 8-15 ESPN. So, it'll be the Bengals and the Steelers. A great game for, for Sunday night or for Monday night football. Two 0-3 teams. <laughs> Somebody's got to win. Unless you tie. And then in that case, I'll probably kill myself. But, uh, yeah, I just bought my Andy Dalton jersey because I love him. 
That is a real thing, actually, by the way. Oh, man, I love it. Andy Dalton, one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league. I love the Bengals. I love their uniforms. I love their stadium. I love their end zones. I love everything about them, except for them, really, because they suck perpetually. But, um, yeah, they're facing the Steelers, who will be starting Mason Rudolph. I hope that's his name. I've been butchering these young guys' names because I don't know who the hell they are. But they're starting Mason Rudolph with a little asterisk next to his name, unless I screw it up. And really, <laughs> they had a chance to beat San Francisco last week. They <laughs> Look at it. They did. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you. They had a chance. Because, you know, San Francisco turned the goddamn ball over five times. And they still ended up winning. So I don't know if that <laughs> tells you more about, you know, the Steelers' performance or tells you more about the 49ers' performance. But either way, Cincinnati... They look good. They look good. You know, Andy Dalton's what the second leading passer in the National Football League. You don't you don't do that on an 0-3 team generally. But he's been playing good football. I mean, his defense hasn't been giving him any favors. But yeah, I, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I'm picking the, the the Bengals in this game. I nothing in Pittsburgh tells me you know winner playoff team or anything along those lines at all. In Cincinnati, I mean, that they don't either, but they appear to be better. I, you know, I hate when they schedule these garbage games on primetime football. I hope to God I'm working on Monday so I don't have to put myself through this trash. You know, I'm going to say that. It's going to be like a 60-60 to 60 game, something ridiculous like that, just points galore. But, yeah, I'm going to pick Cincinnati in this game uh, pretty much just solely based off my bias of Andy Dalton. And because Andy Dalton's playing legit good football, so I got the the, uh, the the I got the Bengals in this game on Monday night, and obviously, uh, as you guys know, the teams on their buys this week. I should have said this at the beginning of the video. I apologize. The teams on their buys this week are the Jets and the 49ers. So that's why I haven't heard from them. And that will do it for Week Four already. Whew. We are a quarter of the way through the season. And I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I love football more than anything. You can ask anybody in my family, my friends. In priority of things that I love, it's football, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then everything else. In that order. And everything else is a distant third. Like, like distant third. So, and yes, I mean everything. Including my own life. But yet... Yeah, this is going to be a good week of football, especially for me as a Giants fan, if uh, my predictions come true, and I am Nostra, Nostra Hoboes. Damn, I'm, I'm going to make that one stick. Nostra Hoboes. But yeah, I got the, uh, I got the, the keys to the city over here when it comes to predictions. I think that I'm doing pretty well this year. I got my guy. Go check him out. Ardent Sports. He's been keeping tabs on everybody. And uh, everybody who's participating in our little friendly prediction contest thing. So I'm sure he'll probably update you guys on his next video. But yeah, that's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo. I hope that you guys enjoy the games this week. I uh, hope that you don't, you know, become a member of Bill's Mafia and put yourself through a flaming table or anything ridiculous like that. Even though I totally want to go to a Bill's game and do that. So please, Bill's Mafia, invite me. I would be more than happy to go. You know I live in New York, so I'm only a couple hours away. Other than that, it's going to be a good week of football. I hope that you guys enjoy. I hope that you guys enjoyed these Bears uniforms on your screen all game because I know I did. And, uh, yeah, if you can make it to, this, to the Monday Night Football game with those two 0-3 teams, you're a tougher man than I because I don't know if I'm going to make it. But either way, we've played an entire game of Madden. It's really late. It's 3.30 in the morning here in New York time, so I need to get some sleep and uh, need to enjoy my day off tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. It's going to do it for me, boy Hobo. I'll catch you guys next week for week five predictions.